What's happening? What's good with all my folks out there? This is your boy, Big Country, the Black Rick Sanchez. We back again with another one. I know I've been gone for a little bit, and there's a few videos that I still need to do, which I will get to. Don't worry. I, I didn't forget. I didn't miss anything or nothing like that. But a little quick short story. You know, I was out on my FedEx, out on my route, doing my thing, you know, as usual, and I got bit by a dog. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I got bit by a fucking dog on my route. So, yeah. Uh, I'll give a little story time about that in another video. But, uh, but yeah, that's why I took a little time off. Because, like I said, I got bit by a fucking dog on my deliveries. But, yeah, that's, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for everybody that's concerned. Uh, otherwise, Nate, yo, uh, we gonna get into this video here. Cat Williams, why Hollywood wants Cat Williams dead. I'm, I'm not surprised this video was made, to be honest. Because when you look at stuff like that, my, when you look at stuff like that, my thing is, uh, when people are talking some stuff or things that usually is not said out loud, people will try to shun you for that. Or when you try to tell the truth about shit, that, or what you presume is possibly the truth, people like to just, you know, make their assumptions. I don't know why, but people just... You know, they have a tendency to love the lie more than the truth. You feel what I'm saying? But um, I'm not going to talk too long, and I, I'll try not to stop or pause the video as much unless it's like some good points that needs to be made. But uh, we're going to get into this. If this is your first time on the channel, definitely like, comment, and subscribe. You know the vibes. You know the deal. And uh, I'm not going to waste no more time. Let's get into it. Cat Williams recently spoke out against countless powerful Hollywood figures in a podcast with Shannon Sharp. And yeah, they are we know not about that. Happy. What makes Cat's expose so dangerous is that tens of millions of people around the world believe he is telling the truth. This man is speaking against the evils of this world. Thank you, Cat Williams. This generation is hungry for the truth. Thank you, Cat, for speaking your truth. We absolutely believe you. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he uh, offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. I didn't hear now, this part. a lot of what Cat said in this podcast cannot be proven true or false, but because he is funny, a good storyteller, and most importantly, confident with his words, this allowed him to convince millions that he's telling the truth. Plus, we all know that celebrities don't often speak their true thoughts on the industry or politics out of fear of being canceled. Mm -hmm. However, some things he said are just straight up lies. Really? I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year. Really? From the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. My next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world. So apparently, Kat read the entire encyclopedia and read eight nonfiction books every single day from age eight to age 12. This is impossible and it's a lie. Throughout this entire podcast, Kat slipped in bold-faced lies, which massively contradicts his preaches of spreading the truth. Nobody knows why liars lie, and that's why I had to come on the program. Cat exists in this mm. middle ground where nobody can really determine if he is telling the truth, if he is lying, if he's telling a joke, if he's on drugs, if he has a mental illness, or if he is clearly exposing the dark and sinister nature of Hollywood. So today, I am going to give you as much context as possible so you can make that decision for yourself. Starting with his earliest introduction to Hollywood on the set of his very first movie, Friday Afternoon. Next, the next. where Cat played the role of Money Mike. But in the script, Cat alleged that Money Mike was originally supposed to be violently assaulted. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. Cat what? Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie. I don't believe, I don't know. The problem with Friday After Next is, we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And a rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to nah, that or ain't. what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. Ice Cube, who wrote, produced, and acted in the film, denied these allegations. Second thing I want to clear up, it was never I would never shoot a scene uh, 
in a movie, especially like Friday. Yeah, that'd be weird, to be honest. You actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. But it's because Kat said things like this throughout his interview caused fans to cast doubt on anyone who denied his claims. Are These sure? people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. Do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. Wow. They all do the same job. Cat wow. believes he has a more legitimate and honorable legacy than the other comedians he has been associated with throughout his career. These men, Cat says, have formed a gang in Hollywood that actively steal and or blackball young entertainers' careers, which drives them Kings into Kings of madness. comedies? For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that listen they got a gang on that side they know what it is they know who the gang is all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets and this is the age of truth and 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 the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies Cat only mentions three of these group members by name Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Ricky Smiley. But you will notice throughout the video he makes bold accusations about many other massive stars like Kevin Hart and Martin Lawrence. Are wow, they also yeah. a part of the gang? Well that's up for you to decide. If you sign up for their program you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in Anyways, let's start with Kat's claims that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey stole his material. But first, I'm going to steal your attention for just a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. What's that? Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites uh, that has okay. way too much information about you? W. Ad Patrick. That's that's where Aura comes in and submits opt-out requests for you. You can see how many data brokers are selling your information and have Aura tour. D.L. Hewley was added and the two-year growth exceeded an HB original Kings of Comedy tour in 2000, which at the time was the highest grossing comedy tour in history. Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac playing sold out arenas from coast Classic to coast. Movie. The tour grossed over $18 million in its first year. In 1999, both Seagram Americas and HBO sponsored the tour. D.L. Hewley was added and the two year gross exceeded $37 million. And at the exact same time of this tour, Cat was just starting to make a name for himself in Hollywood. He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. This is the joke that Kat is referring to which was originally performed in 1998 Comic on BET's Comic View program. You should have had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. <laughs> it looked like this. You flossing in a six shift converter. Using physical comedy, Cat mimics someone trying to assess why their car just broke down while the music is blasting. The alleged theft came from Cedric the Entertainer two years he later on the joke. original Kings of Comedy he tour, did. which was in 2000. The premise of Cedric's joke was that white people are obsessed with the moon and space. He says black people are not, but if they gotta go to space, then they would drive the spaceship like this. We drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter. Nigga, we, nigga, we... We get us a cigarette, nigga. We get us, we be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72 dude, nigga. We get us. A... Hey, yo, I remember this joke too. <laughs> And I used to remember that because he drove the big wheel like this, though. That's crazy. I don't know if that's good. I don't know. It's similar, though. I will say that joke is very, very similar, though. Ooh, wait. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say it. That it was a, a stolen joke. It, 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 it's, it's, it, it, it's similar. I can say it's very similar joke. I can say that. <clears throat> Now when you consider the music cue, 
which is not very common in stand-up comedy, that already looks suspicious. Then the side-by-side -side comparison indicates Cedric makes very similar physical movements that Cat did. Cedric Ooh. says he did not steal the joke, and that if Cat was so upset about it, he had 30 opportunities to speak up. Can't say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things like- Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? I've seen this guy 30 times. Like, dog, if you literally was that upset about, about it, it, like, dog, Just why- Just him and say, hey, yeah, hey why you say nothing? Excuse like, that don't even make sense. But Cat says that Cedric apologized about stealing the joke years ago <clears> and is now lying to the public that he never stole it in the first place. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass. Mm. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times. Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? So imagine how a young Cat Williams felt seeing his best joke being stolen by one of the biggest comedians in the world on the largest grossing comedy tour in history. We never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. He did four comedy specials. There so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Noticing all the backlash, Cedric responded to Kat's comments on Instagram. Revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Kat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his. Cedric added, I'm a grown-ass man, and none of that sh going to go like you think. Ooh. Cedric isn't the only one that stole Kat's material. Steve Harvey's theft of Kat's jokes is arguably much worse. At the 2005 BET Comedy Awards, Steve Harvey introduced a hot upcoming comedian to the stage by the name of Cat Williams. Cat hit the stage and absolutely dominated the crowd with his joke about gas prices. Because the world is crazy right now. What is gas? $600 a damn gallon right now? <laughs> I don't care how much money you got. Gas is entirely too high. Used to be, if you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard. Then Steve Harvey did a joke about gas prices three years later in his comedy special, Still Trippin'. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone, hey, what's happening? Be walking around, cleaning the windshield. Wow. It's hard to see this as anything other than blatant theft. But Cat didn't stop there. He continued to expose Steve's long history of suspicious behavior. It started with why Bernie Mac quit the iconic Kings of Comedy tour. Do you consider oh, yeah. yourself? A king of comedy? They consider that. Oh, that. After Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about, the kings, yeah. they came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Now there has been an infamous Ooh. beef between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac that fans have known about for years. There were often yeah. arguments between the four comedians of who should be the closer or finale of the tour. Since Bernie was a much funnier comedian, Steve would get booed by the crowd when he performed after Bernie. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed nah, to go Bernie last is because it the was your funny. tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy, it was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you got to close if it's your tour. Harvey eventually just ended up being the host of the tour and not performing a full stand-up routine because he just couldn't make the audience laugh as hard as Bernie. D.L. Hewley, who was also on the tour, even said that Steve never thought Bernie would become successful and when he started getting more opportunities, he became jealous. Yeah. You feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time and Bernie Mac not so much? Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. So yeah, I think that, you know, Steve at one point was, you know, uber successful and then Bernie started to, cause he didn't ever think he would get the opportunity he got. But once he did, America loved him. Like we all kind of knew they would. And he decided to go a different way. Eventually, Bernie got sick of Steve hating, realized his worth and exited the tour, which ended up forcing all four guys to split up. We split up. You wish you would have stayed and kept it together, could have kept it together we, a couple of- we, we tried everything, but you know, dudes, 
felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as movie stars. Steve basically claims that Bernie went Hollywood and acted too when, good when for the guys, guys be and Cat didn't like that. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. Mm. What? Mm. You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Allegedly, Steve even called the producers for the heist comedy film Ocean's Eleven to steal the role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. The role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. Ocean's Eleven featured a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and Casey Affleck, among others. The film became a huge critical and commercial success, earning over 450 million movies. at the worldwide box office. I love the Having Ocean's a substantial movies. role in a film of this magnitude helped the rising trajectory of Bernie Mac's career. Yeah, An dude. infamous GQ article from 2003 released when Bernie Mac himself claimed that Steve was jealous of him from the very beginning. Overall, Cat is obviously upset about Steve stealing material, but ironically, he was more upset that Harvey tried to lie and claim that Bernie went Hollywood on the Kings of Comedy, when in reality, Steve was so jealous of his success that Bernie couldn't take it anymore and quit. And now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over him. Mm. The king is the funniest. Period. Every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. But Cat Williams and Steve Harvey's beef did not stop there. A few years later in 2008, a show promoter booked Steve Harvey and Cat Williams to co-headline a New Year's Eve stadium I show in Detroit. This. Cat entered his villain arc and challenged Steve to a comedy battle on the Jamie Foxx radio show, to which Steve accepted. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. The second that you get off stage, I need you to understand. Hey y'all, and this is so crazy too, and I'm sorry, my bad, I pause. Because remember, those the uh y'all OGs that's been around uh, my channel and stuff, I reacted to a Cat Williams roasting people and I remember they he I heard this whole phone call, this shit was crazy. <laughs> and Cat was going crazy, man. I was weak. Understand that that's your final time <laughs> as the king of comics. I hope you got a team of writers. You're gonna need about six or seven of them. Ooh. You can bring the nation, you can bring Rashawn McDonald. You can bring everybody who listens to your radio show. They gonna see the truth. And its name is Cat Williams. <laughs> Yourself, what was supposed to be just a comedy show is now some sort of 1v1 battle dubbed the championship of comedy and steve responded with this i'm not saying he's in trouble but i'm saying this right here jamie a dog don't bark at park cars Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams because he is too famous and successful. So on New Year's Eve, Steve got on the stage and never addressed or made fun of Cat. That was a big mistake. Yeah, well. Cat 
absolutely embarrassed Steve. Yeah, he, he claims did. this was the end of Harvey's career. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig and I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Now Cat isn't very accurate here. Steve had multiple successful arena comedy tours after the championship battle, and Steve was already bald by 2008, so Cat didn't really expose him for having fake hair. I'm about to but say. is it a coincidence that almost immediately after Cat got on that stage and exposed his biggest hater in the industry, he started his crazy downward spiral? In November of 2008, Williams missed an appearance on Conan O'Brien and was later arrested that evening when officers found three handguns in his car while exiting rapper Jim Jones's studio in New York. That same month, he checked into the Mount Vernon Inn in Sumter, South Carolina. Shortly after checking in, employees reportedly found Williams stumbling around wearing just a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. When police arrived, Williams asked them for directions to the nearest hospital. There, his family convinced him to seek psychiatric help, to which he was eventually hospitalized. He just said that he doesn't trust anyone anymore, that everyone has turned against him. He wasn't really coherent. Pretty much after this, Cat wasn't seen again until 2011. No stand-up performances, no movies, no TV. The only time he was talked about was when he was arrested. In November of 2010, authorities arrested Cat in Coata County, Georgia, after he allegedly stole $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Things escalated in June of 2011 when he was arrested in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. He supposedly conspired with three women who attacked the man in his tractor. In 2012, Williams returned to the comedy world with his third HBO comedy special, Catpocalypse. Unfortunately, with the spotlight back on him, Cat fell back into a dangerous cycle as the bizarre behavior continued. In October of 2012, Cat and comedian Faison Love got into a heated argument outside of a Hollywood club over a $50,000 debt that Cat owed Love. During the argument, Cat proceeded to pull a gun on Love that wasn't loaded. Wow. On November 9th, his former assistant, Melissa Shag, claimed that he went into a rage and attacked her the month prior. Then police arrested Cat in Oakland, California on charges of suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he'd allegedly beaten an 18-year-old with a bottle. On That's November crazy. 16th at the Oracle Arena in California, <sighs> Cat took the stage while having a total public meltdown. For 15 minutes, he seemed to be under the influence, rambling about nothing while taunting members of the audience. Well, give me 20, nigga, that's how much the album costs, fuck boy. But I bet if you can walk to your car, I can show your bitch a dick she'll enjoy. So why don't you take your pussy ass on over there, nigga, before I can catch you. Or you can pull your bank out and I'll match you. But you ain't gonna do what shit, so fuck? get punched in the face. Then the audience began booing him. Boo. Boo. We know you ain't got no money, we see your outfit, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. Old broke ass nigga. On November. That's crazy because I've never even seen that clip. And then you hear the girl in the back talking about, I'm afraid to leave or I'm afraid to sit. And like, damn, because it was looking like it was about to blow up a bit, though, the way. And I'm like, damn, he literally was doing that at the show. That's crazy. To see him act like that, though, is wild, though. But I be thinking sometimes when people be going crazy, it's because they be. Because, you know, sometimes some, you know, I believe, I be believing some of them theories where some, where they make people look, sometimes some people be just looking crazy because they exposed some shit. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've heard that little theory. I don't know if it's just me, but I've heard that theory that sometimes when some of these people expose people for stuff, then they all look crazy. Because even, even though Orlando Brown crazy as shit. He be low-key speaking some truth about some things. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know. Let's get back into it.
November 17, 2012, Williams got involved in a police chase while driving his three-wheeled motorcycle and failing to stop. Just a week later, Cat was arrested in Seattle, Washington after he allegedly got into a dispute at a bar in the South Lake Union neighborhood. His arrest came after he missed the first night of a planned two-night performance at the Paramount Theater. That same month, he slapped a Target employee in Sacramento for no apparent reason, which was made fun of on late-night television shows like Conan O'Brien. On December 28th, Williams was placed in handcuffs once again on child endangerment charges. Oh, man, hey, yeah, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cooler than a fan. They took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, how I was, terrible is that? Cat's criminal history does not even come close to stopping here, but I'm sure you all get the point. He was spiraling hard for years, seemingly strung out on drugs or at least experiencing manic episodes. The media called him crazy, a crackhead, and didn't believe anything he was saying since they wrote him off as a madman, but he says he was never under the influence. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. Mm. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. I have far less play in me than you would like. There seems to be a pattern with comedians in the downward spiral. In 1990, Richard Pryor, who struggled with addictions to women and hard drugs, poured high-proof rum on himself and set himself on fire. His widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, claimed it was a drug-induced attempt at ending everything. In 1997, Martin Lawrence was coming off the end of his hit sitcom, Martin, as well as starring in the blockbuster film, Bad Boys. That year, Lawrence allegedly had a meltdown in Los Angeles where he ran into Ventura Boulevard with a gun and threatened tourists and random people. Sources claim Martin began taking psychotropic drugs and having violent outbursts on the set of his movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Martin would continue his erratic behavior, getting arrested for gun possession and later going to rehab. Robin Williams openly spoke about his lifelong battle with addiction, alcoholism, and depression. Comedian Mark Maron has spoken publicly about having severe R. depression. Robin Marty Williams. Lang and Jim Norton as well. John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Greg Giraldo all died of drug overdoses. Yeah, it's R. unclear R. why R. comedians seem to struggle with mental health more than others in the entertainment industry while being tasked with creating the most light-hearted content. Deborah Sarani, a clinical psychologist who treats performers with depression and other mental health problems, said comedians often wear what we call the mask of depression, which helps them put on a more acceptable face to the world. But behind that mask, there is a terrible struggle going on. There is a stigma about depression, and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Cat will and I'm, uh... <coughs> And I've always uh, learned an expression when I was growing up. <coughs> My bad. I've always learned an expression when I was growing up. Usually the one that's the funniest in the room is usually the most depressed. And usually that's the one you always want to check on the most. Because even though, yeah, they be funny as hell. They make you laugh and everything. But sometimes they'll be the ones that be going through shit the most. It's just some of them, just like they said, mask of depression. You know, they just know how to put a mask on and hide what they really be feeling. And that should be sad too. And if you're struggling with mental health and everything, get the help that you uh, seek though. You know, get the help that you need, man. Mental health is not a thing to play with. And I try to understand that too. With me having ADHD, it's, it's crazy. But let's go going on. There is a stigma about depression and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Yeah. Cat Williams has had an extremely rough life, starting with being homeless and alone at age 13. Combine that with the chaotic lifestyle of a comedian, constantly being on the road, late nights, irregular sleeping and eating schedules, the pressure to constantly deliver funny and engaging performances, as well as regularly dealing with hecklers and sometimes unresponsive audiences who make the job mentally taxing. And on top of all of that, add the potentially evil high Hollywood gang that Kat says is actively trying to get him to compromise his morals, but when he refuses, they blackball him and run smear campaigns to call him crazy? <laughs> picture, that man. is a recipe that would make any man go mad. So the question is, was Kat trying to escape an evil industry, or was he actually a drug-induced madman? Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I I've come heard back, him tell this story too. Me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. Go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. 
And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? If it isn't obvious, Kat didn't want to wear the dress. Brandon T. Jackson would go on to portray Martin's son, Trent in Big Mama's House, where the two go undercover at an all-girls performing arts school. Unfortunately, years later, Jackson asserted that he did the project for money and was unaware of the repercussions it would have on his career. Did you get, like, slack when you wore the dress at that moment? Only Cat Williams. Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brand Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> you know, he, he called you, or is this... No, he was saying it in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. Everything went wrong. He's like, everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. Kat has been discussing the subject for years because this has been a pattern that many have speculated is a humiliation mm -hmm. ritual. Eddie Murphy, Tyler Perry, Jamie Foxx, Wesley Snipes, Chris Tucker, Arsenio Hall, Tracy Morgan, the Waynes brothers have all dressed up as women for TV or movie roles. Just before Kevin Hart exploded into fame, he also wore a dress on Saturday Night Live. And even 10 years ago, Kat discussed this. It's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So now <laughs> some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. Kat also detailed an Illuminati meeting alongside Ludacris. There was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's really hard Damn. to back up any of Cat's claims. And even if the stipulation of getting a $200 million deal is that you have to shave your head and sideburns, that seems like an extremely small compromise. And there are no indications that Ludacris ever sold his soul. I mean, he will tell you. He responded to Cat with a rap song. Never been Illuminati, only Illuminati, and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Afro with the sideburns, yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise, comedians check your temperature. Perhaps the most overlooked comment during the interview was Kat's take on Kanye West. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. Mm. Mm. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable mm. like everybody else? The question of whether someone's actions should be judged differently due to mental illness is complex and multifaceted, Man, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, ethical, and legal perspectives. Mental illness can significantly impact an individual's ability to understand the consequences of their actions, to make rational decisions, or to control their behavior. Kat is not excusing Kanye's behavior, and he definitely says he doesn't agree with what he says, but he's just questioning why people are surprised as his whole career he gave obvious signs, such as claiming that he was a god, and he was praised and uplifted for his outlandish behavior. Now Kat has never publicly disclosed any sort of manic or psychiatric problems, but look at how much the world judged him when he was crazy 10 years ago, Man. versus now he is saying the exact same things he was saying while he was crazy, but today he is more calm, coherent, <laughs> and of course, entertaining. Now they are quoting his words as prophetic statements of a wise old genius. Funny how things change. Man, I swear. Did you still go to your job at Amazon? I swear though, because I'm telling you, I've always learned a thing or two that, I'm just gonna mute that. But um, something I've always learned though, right, is that they always the craziest ones usually be the biggest geniuses, low key. And I'm not gonna sit here like just because I'm a Kanye fan, 
I'm not going to sit here and just say everything he says is justified. But Kanye said a lot of stuff in recent in, in times where it made sense. Do you feel what I'm saying? And that's the thing I never can understand is how they literally know but Kanye is bipolar, but yet they wonder why he's acting the way he does. Like they don't know why he does. And it's like, in a way, you're getting what you're asking for. And that's kind of the same way how they were looking at Cat. And the reason why I brought that up, too, is like, that's why I got ADHD. And I be telling folks, like, I got ADHD. Sometimes at times, I don't pay attention or I don't give a fuck about some things. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, I try to take better control of that. And I try to get the help that I need. And that's why I've mentioned before, if you're dealing with mental health issues, please get the help that you need. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know what I'm saying? It just takes that one phone call to take care of it, you know, and it's understandable. Trust me. Pull your pride to the side and take care of your mental health. We all need to take care of our mental health out here. That's probably why people out here are batshit crazy and the world is going to shit and everything right now. And just people saying the most delusional things out here and stuff like that. But otherwise than that, I, I, I can see that, though, in a way. I can see how a lot of what Kat has been saying has been facts, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, he be just calling out shit sometimes. Now, sometimes he might be a little, a little wooey, but, you know, but. Oh, shit, excuse me. That was a strong one. Damn, I can talk, talk. <laughs> but, no, nah, my bad. Um, the point is, it's like, you know, we, we really don't know what people, you know what I'm saying? The person you talk to regularly could really have mental health issues and you just didn't know about it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, people know how to put on a mask and disguise that stuff. I don't disguise nothing. I tell people, hey, I'm a little batshit crazy at times. I'm ADHD. And this is what you're going to get when you're fucking with me. But I'm really the most laid back person you'll ever meet till you take me to that side. But before I keep blabbing on the stuff like that, I've enjoyed this video. Patrick CC is a great channel. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Give him some love. You know what I'm saying? He he be having a lot of good videos to check out and stuff like that. I'm going to probably check out a few more of his videos on this channel, too. But, yeah. no, nah, Cat Williams, though, man, he definitely, uh, 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 he wanted them, you know what I'm saying? The ones that really got that dog in them when it comes to comedy and being truthful and stuff. So, but otherwise than that, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed that video because I did, too. Let me know what your thoughts is in the comments below. Do y'all rock with Cat Williams? Uh, let me know, have you ever been to a Cat Williams show, too, before? And um, also, who do you think is your kings of comedy in the way, too? Like, give me your top four kings of comedy in the comments down below. For me, I would say Richard Pryor, ugh, Bernie Mac, um... Ooh, that's tough, man. Because there's a lot of good comedians out there, too. And not just the black ones, too. Like, people like uh, Gabriel Iglesias is a good comedian. Uh, and there's a few of them Asian comedians I like, too. They funny as hell, too. And I also like Trevor Noah, too. Cause Trevor Noah, that hosted The Daily Show, you know what I'm saying? He funny as shit, though. But he be speaking some real-ass shit, though. So, you know. um, I don't know. I... I'll think of some other ones. If I think of my foe, I'm going to put it down in the comments below. But otherwise than that, y'all, definitely I rock with y'all. Let you two know that y'all rocking with the algorithm. And uh, let me know what y'all think about uh, the content that we're putting out here. And um, I, like I said, I'm going to give a story time about my about my damn hand I'm getting bit by a dog and shit. Yeah, that, that happened. Ugh. But otherwise than that, y'all, I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Let's keep the ball rolling. Live every day like your last. And as always, great vibes, great day. Y'all be easy. Pow. OG Panda Beats.